God bless my brothers and sisters. It's another beautiful day to worship the Lord in the beauty and holiness. I'm going to explain to you all the reason for many of these teachings. Because God gets blamed for everything. And many people in the world don't understand why things happen in the world. Deaths, sicknesses, chaos, destruction. Many are ignorant to why those things happen in the world. But see, because a person doesn't believe in the truth, then they're going to make up whatever they feel. But if they knew what the word says and they know what God says in his word, right? Then they will understand from the word by faith why these things in the world happen the way they, why the things in the world happen the way they do. So these teachings that I do are important because many people are looking for the help and the assistance that you can only get from God. And many are fasting, they're praying, they're reciting Bible verses, they're, they're reading, you know, they're doing all different type of things, trying to get God's attention or get God to move in their life, however you want to call it, right? But what they don't understand is that everything that they're doing was taught to them by people who have misquoted, uh, falsely taught God's word. So many don't understand why, hey, I'm still getting attacked, why I'm still hearing voices, why I'm still having these lustful dreams and all this stuff is going on because you were told God's name. You was told Jesus name. You were told different words that are in the Bible, like pray and, and fast. But they told you their own meaning and their own way of doing those things. Not what the Bible says. Right. So. Because you are ignorant to God's word and you don't know what the scripture truly says, you haven't been taught properly, then you're not able to. So that's why you're not able to receive the promises that's in God's word. So for instance, say someone brought you along and said, Hey, okay, you're a Christian now, right? You're a Christian, you're a believer. So then you start going into the Bible, looking at these promises that God gave true believers, right? No, no, um, that, uh, greater he that's in you than he that's in the world. He'll give you understanding. You know, you receive the spirit, you'll receive power. You know, these signs will follow and that believe. You'll cast out devils, speak with new tongues, lay hands on the sick. I mean, just name it. So now you're seeing these verses in the Bible, these scriptures, and your child is sick. Your husband is sick. Your wife is sick. Your friend is sick. Or, you know, you're, you're, you're being attacked spiritually and you're praying all these prayers. Luke 10 and 19, Matthew 10 and 1, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? You're praying all these scriptures because you were told about God. You were told that anything that's in the word is for you and, and you can pray it and God's going to bless you and he's going to move. You're going to have a legion of angels that's going to come to your aid and assistance, right? But those things never happen because you wasn't taught the truth of God's word. You were taught the name of God the name of Jesus, you were taught particular words that's in the Bible, but you wasn't taught the truth of God's word. You was taught a false version of God's word. This is why many people today, you look on my YouTube, and my Facebook, I have prayed for many people that believe that they were Christians, which they wasn't. This is why when they get prayed for, the spirits start manifesting and the, and the evil spirits, the devils come up out of them, right? So how are you living for God and serving God and you have 20 spirits coming out of you? You, you? There's no way that you're a Christian, you see, but you were taught that. And that's just like in the world. One day somebody could say, hey, I'm a I'm a lesbian. The next day somebody could say, hey, I'm straight. OK, it's not going to change anything. You understand? The spirits are still there, whether it was lust, whether it's seduction, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's, 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 it's anger, it's rage, it's. Whatever spirit is in you is still there. So whether somebody says, hey, I'm a Christian now, 
you know, Christians are known by walking in the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit, being holy, righteously and godly in his present world. So someone told you about God and gave you their 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 way of how they feel that God should be uh, 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 worship or 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 served or praised. So they say, yeah, pray and ask God for whatever you want, you know, and, and, you know, if you want money, ask God, you know, pray to Jabez prayer, you know, go read the book of, uh, go read when God says he's going to bless Solomon with wealth and you want wealth that see, he told Solomon. So you go and get the same, you, you understand what I'm saying? So you go and do that and nothing happens. You didn't, they didn't teach you where it says in the new Testament, you have not because you ask not. And you ask that you may do what? Consuming upon your what? Right? So, you don't, they didn't tell you that the will of God, right? To, to learn what the will of God is. So, you're believing that you know God, but you know the name of God. But in order to know God is to know his word and to obey his word. There's no way that light and darkness can mix. You understand? You can't ask the enemy, you can't ask someone who has an enemy, hey, what your enemy ate today? What do your enemy do in his spare time? They can't tell you, right? They don't care. They're sworn enemies. So why would you know things about God when you live contrary and against God and you live against his word? You don't understand the things of God. You don't know the things of God. So this is why the frustration comes then want to throw the towel in you got people that's gospel you know fake christian rappers whatever they want to call themselves telling you they almost threw the towel in they're ready to give up not paul paul said he he fought the fight paul said that he 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 he, he stayed the course he kept the faith right so there's no throwing the towel in so paul wouldn't be able to relate to people that's speaking that today that's because you signed up for christianity and Christianity doesn't have any power. The Holy Spirit is not going to force anything. It's not there. See, the Holy Spirit forces God's will. The Holy Spirit makes you to be spiritual, to make you to be like Christ. Remember, Christ came first, casting out devils, healing the sick, raising the dead, right? That's not what man did before Christ came. They said they never seen miracles like that in all Jerusalem. Go and read the four Gospels, okay? They never seen it. They said, we can't deny what miracle we've seen. We can't deny it. Have we ever seen the eyes of the blind being opened before? So Satan's been here. So they never seen those things before that Christ did, right? So when these believers receive the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of Christ Jesus inside of you, they walked as he walked. John 14 and 12 say you do the same works that he, that he do and even greater works. That's what it says, right? So you've seen that the dead was brought back to life just like Christ did. You've seen that spirits was casted out just like Christ did. You've seen people were healed from all different diseases. Every one of them was healed the same way it wrote in the book of Matthew. It said Christ healed them all. It said Peter in Acts 5, they were, everyone came, all of them were healed. You see the same? They got the same sentences. They're saying all was healed at Matthew four, all was healed. Acts five. They're saying the same thing because they had the same power, ability and authority over sickness, over death and over evil spirits. These are people that are truly born again. Those who are truly saved, because there's no point to say that a person is born again when they don't have abilities that make them to seem different than who they were before. That's why the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The Holy Spirit makes you to become new. You talk different. You walk different. You act different. You understand? You think different. Think on these things that are just, things that are lovely. Let the mind that's in Christ, right? You even speak different. Let your speech be always with what? Read the rest for yourself. Okay? What does the Bible say about loving your enemies? Doing good to them that hate you. Blessing them that curse you. You're different. You weren't doing those things in the world. You wasn't laying hands on the sick and they was recovering. You wasn't speaking in tongues. You understand? 
It wasn't walking in the power of the of the of the Holy Spirit. So these are people that are truly born again, because to say that this person is a Christian, this person is saved, this person's a believer. It's no way that a person can determine that just because of what someone is saying. Because a false prophet, a wolf in sheep clothing, will be able to mimic and say the things that you are saying. Okay? A lot of you can't see what they're doing behind closed doors to know what kind of sins are being committed. But what you do have, when you see one who was born of the Spirit, they're walking in the same authority as Christ. They're reminding you of Christ. They're, they're, they're making you to marvel and to wonder, how are these things taking place? The Bible said the kingdom of God is not in word, but it's in power. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and 5, he said, For our gospel came not unto you in word only. Read the rest for yourself. You see, it was a difference, a distinction between these people to know that they were sent from God. The Bible said it's not he who commended himself is approved. But who the Lord commendeth is approved. So let's backtrack. Let's go back to Mark 16. That was spoken later. Let's go to Mark 16. The Bible said, These signs will follow them that believe. Okay? Paul, we can read about Paul's life before he was a Christian, right? Paul wasn't casting out devils. Paul wasn't healing the sick. Paul wasn't raising the dead. But he did all those things when he became a Christian and receive the Holy Spirit, right? That's right, because we can read about Paul persecuting the church. We can read about Saul, when his name still was Saul, how he was sitting there and they laid the coats at, at, at Saul's feet while they stoned Stephen. No power. They ain't mentioned him, you know, raising the dead and healing the sick and having anchors and handkerchiefs and aprons being brought to his body. Those all came after he became new. Y'all not reading the word? Look at Peter's life, John's life, James' life, all the 12 apostles. Look at their life before they received the Holy Spirit, okay? They were sometime in, sometime out, you know, sin in the day, sin tomorrow, you know, whatever the case may be, right? But when they received the Holy Spirit, they lived like Christ. They was in, it was unity. It was peace. It was love. It was no division. They were all together. You had Peter in, in Jerusalem in Acts 15, James and John. They were letting each other talk. They were listening. You know, they were reciting Old Testament scriptures and they all gave silence. It was no debates, no arguments, no anything. Okay, whatever they did talk about, because some was Jews and they had, you know, a lot of the things that, that they still did, you know, as as as, as Jewish uh, uh, people and, and, and people that came from being Pharisees, they had to speak the word. Then once that word was spoken, they all received it. Okay, that was it. Some had talks like, hey, that's why the Bible said a heretic after the first second of my nation reject. So the Bible said him that's weak in faith receive, but not to that with disputations. You didn't see them, them, them like, yeah, I don't, I don't agree. I don't want to hear that. I don't, I'm just believing. They heard what was spoken and they received it. So all I'm saying is, is the Bible says with any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, right? Paul was Paul the same as the way he was before. Did Paul act like Saul when he became born again? Was he angry like he was? Was he looking at things from the flesh? Was he persecuting people? Was he was he imprisoning people? Was he then people were being killed? You know, was he doing any of those things that he was doing when his name was Saul? No. Then you seen him also having the authority and the power as Mark 16 verse 16 to the end says, right? said that these signs will follow them that believe. We see Paul's life before Christ. They, his name was Saul. Then we see Paul's life after, right? After he's in Christ and the brother is walking in power and authority just like Jesus. Just as Jesus said in John 14 and 12, the works that I do shall you do, right? Right? So all the people that's walking around, I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God with no power. That's how you know they don't read the Bible. Because I'm telling you exactly how it went. If, if, if I didn't have people that went through deliverances and people that were sick and they were healed, God working through me, why would I be talking about this? I'd be a hypocrite. 
I'm speaking from my own experience of believing the word, obeying the word. So how do we get to this point where the spirits will be casted out, where where we can lay hands on the sick? Well, it tells you in Acts. I'm not going to tell you where you go find it for yourself. But in the book of Acts, it says that the Holy Spirit was given to them that obey him. That's in the word, right? You see that? So we clearly see that Elizabeth and Zechariah and Luke one, neither one of them had the spirit in the beginning chapters of Luke chapter one. Right. But the Bible said they did what? Go read it for yourself. Then you see Acts tells you why the spirit is given to us. Then look at why Elizabeth and Zechariah received the spirit. They were doing what? They were obeying God in all areas of their life. Read it. Go read in Luke 1. I'm not going to tell you what it says. You read it for yourself. See? So, this is why I'm telling y'all. Why are you not seeing miracles, signs, and wonders? Because it's a rare privilege to receive that spirit. People look down on me. They say things about me. They get mad at me. But they've been, they're part of all these ritualistic, false churches, all this worldly stuff, but they still haven't been used by God in their five years, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years of false preaching to even cast out one spirit and to be used consistently like the apostles. All they can do is talk, talk, talk. People are not coming because of talk. They have to come because of power. Okay? The Bible tells you Okay, it has to be power. Nobody just coming because of some words. Think about this. If Christ just came, right, and he was just talking, you already had the Pharisees, the doctors of the law, the scribes, the lawyer, all these different people, right, that all was trying to portray being righteous and, and being holy and and. And, and being people that fear God. So if Christ just came and was just talking like them. Yes, come to God. You need to repent for your sins. You don't think that the Jews was out there talking about you got to live this and live that and do this and do that according to the laws of Moses. Think about it. They could, they, Gentiles couldn't even go in the temples with them. You understand? So you know they made it be known that you're not supposed to be living those ways. That's why they made, that's why they made it to where the Gentiles couldn't eat with them. They kept giving the Lord a hard time saying you ate with sinners. So they, they made it known that they didn't agree what they felt were Gentile practices or Gentile way of life. Right. So if Christ just came and was like, yeah, guys, repent for your sins. Just another person that rose up. OK, let me show you. You just another person. That rose up. So look what Paul say. Paul said for our gospel came not unto in word only. But also in power. You hear that? And in the Holy Ghost. In much assurance as ye know what men and men were among you for your sakes. What are they going to say the Holy Ghost is? They're going to say the way they preach their message. Why does the Holy Ghost have to make you preach a message in a certain way? That's you coming up with it. Because if you're preaching God's word, if you're preaching God's word, then you're only going to be saying what the word of God say. Why do I got to sound a particular way? You got people that have passed out behind the pool pits, right? All for the simple fact that they exhort themselves because of the way they get the preaching and they be out of shape and they get the screaming and hooping and hollering. Then they, they end up passing out. So let me show you something real quick. So when you look at Okay. Now look. Now I want to show something real quick. Okay, let's go to 
Um, how do I switch it over? Okay. All right. Now, look. Now, when you look at the word of God, right? I was on the phone with Sarah earlier and we were talking about, um, we were talking about how the people in Acts 15 that was around apostles at first, they knew some things about the word because the Bible said that they was teaching them to obey basically the laws of Moses and to be baptized. I mean, to be circumcised and, and that they would be saved. So they mixed two things. I'm going to get to that though. Okay, so let me go to Acts 5 real quick. Okay, look what it says. Then stood there up, Acts 5, verse 34. Let me just show you how this has always been the way it was. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said to them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves, which ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days, listen, rose up Theodas, boasting himself to be somebody. You see that? Boasting himself to be somebody. Right? To whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who were slain, and all many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. After this, a nut, see, it doesn't stop. After this, man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of taxing and drew away much people after him. He also perished in all of them. Even as many as obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if it is the counsel, for if this counsel of the, the work, this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Lest happily you find, you, you found even to fight against God. Okay. So you see that. So they're telling them that people had rose up and claimed to be people. See? But there was no power from heaven backing them. There was no, no supernatural abilities that made them set apart. It came to nothing. Now, let me read Acts 15, verse 1 real quick. And certain men which came down from Judea, listen, Judea, right? Taught the brethren. So they taught them. What's the Bible say about false teachers? Right? Right? What Peter tells you about it. Look what it say. And taught the brethren and said... Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Now, listen, the word saved, as far as believing in Christ, is found where? In the New Testament. Okay, obeying the laws of Moses is found where? In the Old Testament. So these people were mixing the law with the gospel of truth. Okay? The, 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 the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're mixing it. Just as today, people will tell you that you got to pay tithes and offerings. That's in the law. But then they'll tell you, hey, bring your offering uh, to the church. Give it to your pastor. These are both names that are found in the New Testament. Right? So they'll mention these things. And you see, if you read further in Acts 15... He said they, 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 they're subverting, they was, they were subverting their souls, right? Teaching them foolishness, who they gave no such command to do so, right? So this is the point that I'm trying to make to y'all. So by reading the word, you will see that people rose up claiming to be somebody important. You see that there was people that was around true men of God in Acts 15, and they were sent away. And went and taught false doctrine. Right? So they knew some things about the Bible. But they didn't keep the doctrines of Christ. As they're supposed to. They taught falsely. Right? So my whole point of this video is to explain to people that it proves that people don't have a love and respect and fear for God. Because even the Hebrew Israelites... Even these people in denominations, 
Even these people that are street preachers, even these people that are false pastors and false apostles and false prophets and whatever over these false churches, much of what they speak and believe can only be found on the internet today. Okay? Where do you find the, the word denomination? Can you find it in the Bible? Where do you find the word non-denomination? Can it be found in the Bible? Where do you find where a Christian paid tithes and offerings in the New Testament? Okay, I'm talking about us doing it. We've seen where the Bible told us, you know, to marry or not to fornicate, to pray lifted up with holy hands. You know, that if a man is praying or prophesying and have his head covered, dishonor of his head. If a woman is praying or prophesying with her head not covered, right? So you read all this in scripture, right? So you see all these instructions. But there's no instructions on you can call your church whatever you want to call it. You can name it whatever you want to name it. There are no instructions. Okay. So my whole thing is the Internet is what these people are using to puff themselves up because they don't understand the Bible. So the Internet teaches them different things. It sounds good to people because they're ignorant whenever you're not intelligent. And somebody comes and, and have a plan put together. Even if the plan is not a good plan, they're showing that person respect for just making up a plan that they didn't do. And it fits their, 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 their delusion or their false beliefs. So they support it. So you have the Hebrews lights that come out of nowhere. They're telling you the Sabbath is Saturday. Who told you that? Because nowhere in the Bible are those things so. Nowhere does it say in the Old or New Testament the word Saturday. Saturday, the name is a new age word. You follow me? That was created by people who are non-believers. People who are disobedient to God. People who do not believe in God created the names of the week. So why do you not find those names um, of the week in the Bible? Why is Monday, Tuesday, all the way to Sunday is not mentioned in scripture. Why? But where is it mentioned at? On the internet. In Google. Who was it taught by? People who are in denominations. Not the Bible. Y'all follow me? Don't matter how you feel about this. This is facts. Anybody say, yeah, Pentecostal, Baptist, we believe, apostolic, we believe, Catholic. You were taught that. By the internet and Google and some person who can't show you those things in the Bible. Those are the facts. So you see my point now why I'm telling you what I'm telling you? They believe in things that they can't prove. Okay? The world, I mean false Christians, believe in man's word more than God's word. Because they Google everything. Even the people that seem to be knowledgeable, and I got to fix that, seem to be knowledgeable in God's word, their knowledge comes from the internet. And that's what I'm telling you. Look at the Hebrew Israelites. They're pushing racism. They're pushing black power, black pride, black Jesus, right? So you know how people feel about slavery, a lot of people, a lot of African Americans. You know, a lot of people feel like the things that go on in this country is unjustly and, you know, the, the, the African Americans get treated you know, unfairly and the projects and the ghettos. And so now you got somebody that makes a religion that makes you feel like, yeah, because they don't understand why Af black people could have been done so wrong and God don't do anything about it. Right. They don't have any faith to understand that nobody went through more than what Christ went through on that cross. You understand? You don't know what it feel like to die for the sins of the whole world. Remember him in the garden? Said his sweat was like what? Blood dripping, right? You don't know what he felt. The Bible said that he was bruised. For what? The chastisement of our what was upon him. By his stripes we are what? Come on now. You remember what he went through? Some of y'all ain't never experienced the, 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 the pain, the punishment that he had to experience at the hands of those people. And what he went through spiritually. You understand? So all that talk, you able to walk around and, and, and not have to worry about being nailed to a cross. 
or have a spear thrown and, 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 and piercing your side or having a crown of thorns plat on your head. You understand? Or drinking some vinegar or something. You don't have to go through that ever. You might never go through that. Right? So it gives them something to stand on. Oh, yeah, we the black people, black Jesus. We've been oppressed all these years. Just give them something to fight back. Make them a narrative. Give something to, 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 to create controversy and make it seem like this how the Jews were, thinking that, that, that Messiah was going to come and restore back the things that, was in, that the, restore back Jerusalem and Israel and all that stuff. They wanted him to come back and, you know, do what they felt, right? He was going to come back in pride and whatever, war, bloodshed, whatever they felt, right? So this is my point. So the Hebrews lights, you'll see them on Saturday preaching at false preaching outside dressed up in purple and all this stuff, right? The internet, the internet, nowhere in the Bible does it mention Saturday. Nowhere in the Bible do it mention black Jesus. They going to be like, Oh, these dark people who told you that where in the Bible does it say that Ishmael, this and that Edomites, whatever they're trying to use, where does the Bible put it in the way that they're putting it? Because the Bible says simplicity that is in Christ. The Bible say not to sin. It don't beat around the bush and say, well, we should try to do our best. It say sin not. The Bible say love your neighbors. Well, you guys, um, you know, you're living amongst people who don't believe in Jesus like you. So, you know, um, think about the best thing to do. Then anybody can come up with anything because you don't know what it, it's not saying a direct command. Right. If the stop sign, don't, if there's no stop sign that say stop, why would we be cautious of it? If we don't see a red light, why would we want to hit our brakes if the light is green? We, we're not instructed to do so. We come to a stop when it's the, the, we start slowing down to come to a stop when the light turns yellow or the light is red. We come to a stop sign. We don't think twice about it because we are commanded to stop by law. We are instructed by law to do those things. So why would they just leave it for us to decide whatever the, the Bible is saying? It tells you there's no way that you can have a foundation there's no way you can have leadership. You can have a, 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 a church without having structure and order. That's why Paul said that they may know how to behave theirself in the house of God, which is the what, right? He's not telling you that you can do whatever you want. He said to behave themselves, behave, okay? He said, if any man is disorderly, right? So they're, they're telling you that you can't even be a fornicator, a drunk, an extortioner. You're going to, you know, say not even to eat with one man in Corinthians chapter five. He slept with his father's wife and got kicked out of the church. You understand? So these, these were instructions and rules. So all I'm trying to say to y'all is this. Is that people today, 99%. Right. I made this video. I was talking about the Kirk Franklin yesterday. Ask Jeremy. I seen this video. This guy, he got this, this, this uh, Facebook uh, page. He talks about like all the foolishness that goes on in the African-American churches. He did the same video about Kurt Franklin and used the same Bible verses. I was shocked. Right. I showed Jeremy. I showed Sarah, you know, Courtney, you know, and he was talking about how Romans three and the, ch the verse that uh, Kurt Franklin used was for past tense and for people who have sent all together like in the world. And he showed Romans five to support that the same way I did. He said, you got to read the whole chapter. But you know you're going to have 50-50. Oh, no, we're not perfect. I know that's right. But y'all never say, listen, and, I, and this ain't about Kirk Franklin. I love this brother. You know, I'm here to help him. You know, if the Lord will, right? But I'm just here to say this, though, right? Just in love. That why do they never, ever confess that they find pleasure in what they're doing? They'll say being a Christian is hard. They'll say all this stuff. But why do these people who come out with these public uh, uh, statements in these public videos about their behavior, they never admit how they enjoyed it, but they know the Bible says that they're not supposed to be doing it. That's all. I mean, just keep it real because nothing else makes any sense. If you're, if you're making yourself to believe that you, if you're trying to push a narrative that you, that we're always going to do wrong, then you, th there's no point to marry. There's no, <laughs> you, you, you up boo. There's no point to marry. There's no point to, to do anything. Because that means that at any given moment, somebody's going to do wrong. But see, they all say that we all sin. That's not true. Because 
there are some sins that people have committed that others will never commit or have never ever committed because they don't have a desire to. Remember, the Bible was the Bible. We can't try to take on this Bible, this, this belief, and then try to alter it and make it to be the way we want it to be. It don't work that way. Right? So it's the internet that puts the battery in their back. And I, I'm not getting on Kirk Franklin. That's what I'm trying to say, though, right? So he mentioned something about he read the word in Greek. And it said that, that it means it continue. Now, listen, listen to me, y'all. Listen to me. And I, I want to speak about I hope I got enough daylight. Right? I want to speak about this real quick. Why would... And this is something that Sarah said that, that really made sense and was really good, right? She said, but if it was written in Greek, it's supposed to be the same as what you read in the Bible. It shouldn't be a different translation. It came from that language. So it should be identical. So this is my point that I'm trying to make to y'all. How do you know that that Greek is authentic Greek? You're going... See, when you start getting into trying to trust in the world and trying to research everything the world has to give you, we know for certain that this Bible was given to us by God because it goes against everything. All that Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic, it all um, supports the flesh. When you, when you read it, they, 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 remember people would say... That uh, perfect in Hebrew or Greek or whatever means spiritual mature. You see, it all takes away from that truth. The Bible stands on itself. When you read the Old Testament, the New Testament supports the Old Testament. The Bible say we establish the law, righteousness. That's what it all was for and not to sin since day one. So we fulfill that through Christ. That's why Paul say we establish it. You understand? We would establish it if we were still sinners. We become righteous through him. Okay? Washing away our sins. Boom. You see? Partaking in the same death and resurrection. Being cleansed. Right? Being purged. Right? Then we receive the spirit. So now in the flesh, the, 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 our, our flesh, our skin, right? Our, our, our natural side is ruled and dominated by the spirit. Okay? Just the same way Christ was born of the spirit. You see? Like, you're not understanding everything? Okay. That, exactly. So... Because there's no woman or man that's going to give you the spirit of God. It's going to come from God while you're in this human body. Okay? And Christ didn't come from man. So he wasn't going to be born from, from Joseph. You understand? His, his, God is his father. Now, when we receive the Holy Spirit, it comes from heaven as well. We become born again. We become made new. Okay? The Bible says Christ is the what? Right? One man was made a living soul. The first Adam, then the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. This is something new. Right? Now, this is the point that I'm trying to make. The internet is what motivates you to believe in all those things. Kurt Franklin said, and I'm not getting on this brother, right? Love this brother. Here to help this brother. He said, the Greek says, it's okay. Right? And I'm not just saying this for him. Many people do the same thing as well. Y'all know I spoke on these things way before this situation came up. But I just want to use this, though, because he's well known, you know, in the world. And this is what, you know, he came to believe. But I'm not here to chastise him, rebuke him. I'm just here to just give wisdom. All I'm saying is this. How do you know who wrote that Greek translation? Who are the people? Did you sit down with them? Did you try their spirit? To make sure they're of God. Did you try? Did you see if that they were genuine believers? Or are they just writing something? Right? Because they're writing. How do you know that they're not sent from Satan? The Bible says that Satan has ministers. Something bit me on my back. Look at them bugs. I just woke them up or something. They must have been hanging in there. The Bible says that Satan has ministers. Right? It says that. And Paul even said such a... False apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. It says it. So all I'm saying to y'all is how do you know that all this stuff on the Internet, people don't have, uh, um, they're, 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 they're not, um, you know, being wicked, right? Being uh, deceitful, uh, um, um, you know, moving about in mischief. Like, how do you not know those things? You know, once you get bit by something, caught me on my back. How do you not, how do you, how do you not think that these people who are portraying to be of God, 
on the internet who you don't meet. Like, I do videos as often as the Lord will allow me, right? You see Courtney, you see my kids, you see my life. You, you know how I live, okay? You see the pictures, you see Instagram, like, it's all the same. You're not going to say, oh, oh, look, look, look at Brother Ronald, right? I live what I'm preaching. I live what I'm talking. It's who I am daily, okay? So when you look at a Greek translation, a Hebrew translation today, why is it different? Like you people, I mean, you people, these people are millionaires. They have businesses and they're paying bills. It's like, where is the level of intelligence? It's like, are they really just, you know, are they thinking on their own? Or, you know, is it is it the spirits that are, that are motivating them? Because how do you sit here and say things that don't make any sense? How can you say that the Greek translation is a different translation than what the Bible said? Remember, it was written, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and parts of it in Aramaic. And the New Testament was written in Greek, right? So how is it a different translation? Somebody is sowing discord amongst the brethren. Somebody is deliberately mis uh, changing up those translations. It's supposed to be the same. The Bible sits there and tell you that the world hates him. Who is behind the Greek translations on the internet? Who's behind it? You didn't meet that person. You ain't have no sit down with them. You don't know what they, how they feel. You know, you don't know how they feel about God's word. You reading a translation. It don't mean they even got to be Christians. Remember, Greek is a language. So don't have to have anything to do with God. You got people that's African-American don't believe in God. You got people that's Caucasian don't believe in God. You got people who's African-American don't believe in God. People who's Caucasian believe in God. That don't mean that every person you meet is going to represent God the right way. It's because Brother Ronald's African-American. So next brother African-American, he going to speak the way I'm speaking about God. It doesn't work that way. You understand? So why would you trust a random translation of Greek that you don't know if it's authentic or legitimate? The internet is not screening people. The internet is known for having information, right? They get paid off of this stuff. It's a business. You never see Google having them buildings. People work for Google. What are they doing? You think Google's not getting paid for Google? Come on, brothers and sisters. They don't care. They're not screening somebody. Somebody could write, you could type in Jesus. And you and you can say, what? How tall was Jesus? Somebody gonna say on the internet. I believe that he was. And somebody gonna say, well, the Bible doesn't say how tall he was. You gonna be able to find fit. You gonna be able to find both. One is gonna tell you, um, you know, hey, we really don't know, but I did research, and for him being from Galilee, today those people are about you know, such such tall. Statistics says that people that from Jerusalem. Or Nazarene, 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 or Galilee, they're usually about a uh, 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 five eight, and the Lord probably would have had uh, slick back hair, you know, because I did research and they said that descendants of Judah and like you, you see what I'm trying to say, that's what they're going to come with. That's the internet for you. They 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 have to know everything because they want to make themselves. What did it say? The Jews require a sign and. The Greeks, you know, uh, wisdom or you, uh, you, you understand. So um, this is the point that I'm trying to make that how are you trusting the Internet over God's word? The Internet can't be trusted. You don't know who people are writing the Greek, but the Bible tells you that it's the word of God. It goes against everything. Why are all the translations of Greek and Hebrew? always opposite of what the bible says itself it's always in greek this means this so what does heaven mean and y'all understand why do all the words that 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 brings upon shame right like sin they'd be like oh uh sin if means to be continuing in sin or uh this means uh to try your best like why would it be different so you might as well say you don't even read the Bible anymore. So you basically going to print out every word that's in the Bible in your Greek translation. You're not going to have the word of God anymore. You can't say it's the word of God because it's a different word. It's a different translation. 
The Bible say don't add to the word, don't take away from the word. That's revelations, right? Listen, let me let me give you wisdom. Let's go look at it real quick. Let's look at it. Let's go to Revelations real quick. Okay? This is how you know people don't have any faith. They're going to they gonna argue me, though. You know they're not, they're not going to give me no break. Watch this. In Revelations. Let's go all the way down to the bottom. For I testify, Revelations 22 and 18, for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Do y'all hear that? Do y'all hear what he's saying? This book. What book? The Bible. Listen now. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things. Listen now. God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of the prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testified these things says, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Did y'all hear that? What are they going to say? You cannot add nor take away. He's saying this book. John is not vouching for no other book, no other information, but this book. You understand? That's the final book that we have in the Bible. It's telling you, if any man adds or take away. So you saying a different word other than what the Bible said, that is a false doctrine. It don't matter how you want to look at it. Nobody know that Greek that you're reading. Nobody know the, the, the Hebrew that you're reading. You don't know if they sent from Satan to twist up the Hebrew or to put their own meanings. One thing we know we do have is the word of God. That's all we could stand on. And that word goes against everything in this world. That's a fact. Ain't no nation loving everybody itself. There's war, there's violence, there's sex, there's drugs. There's everything the Bible say not to do. The Bible say be sober. You're allowed to buy liquor in this country. You're allowed to smoke marijuana in many states now. This, the, the world don't obey God's word. You know that. So how do you think in that reading the, the Greek and the Hebrew? You're reading in Greek and Hebrew. And it's telling you that being perfect means being spiritually mature. Mature is a new age word. So that means that they came, somebody recently came up with that. Come on now. They wasn't saying mature back in those days. Okay. So that wouldn't have been what they said. They would have said what the Bible says. He told Abraham, walk before him perfect. Noah was perfect in our generation. That perfect word been around for years. Do you see one? You see anywhere um, where they're talking about being spiritually mature? You see that? They made that up. And why are their words always different than what you can find in the Bible? If it comes, that's what I'm saying. They don't be thinking because if it comes, if it comes from the word of God, then it should be found in the word of God. It shouldn't be different than what the Bible says. Think about it. So why do they trust in an anonymous person that's telling you a, a, a language and language is different? They don't never believe that Satan tries to do anything. You see that the word of God can't be altered with. It can't be changed. You see, I mean, see the word of God can't be altered and it can't be changed. But now they're going to Greek and Hebrew all because they don't want to wear that shame of living in sin. They, they done built their reputation of being this believer of God, believer of Jesus, doing all this stuff. Right. And now they seeing what the words say. That's how you know it's real, because why would you not just read what it say? Because what you read troubled you. That's why you go to the Greek, to the Hebrew, right? That's why you go to the internet. Because when you open that Bible, you are troubled. There ain't no escape. You got to put the white flag up. Then that's when you start searching. Let me look up the word. Uh, we all have sin in, in, in Greek. That, that, trans, that, that, that translation of scripture in Greek 
wouldn't make any sense to say continuing in sin. When the verses, when the, when a chapter in Romans three is telling you that they're talking about the sins that were created, Paul is talk. Never mind. Just go read it for yourself, right? The whole chapter. The false Christians always take one chapter out of the Bible, and that supports their whole life right there. Like it's not twenty-seven books in the New Testament. These brothers were killed, not because they're telling you that we're all going to sin. They were. They was. They were killed. Not because they were saying, hey, we all make mistakes, we all fall short. The word brought conviction. It brought shame. It troubled them. You don't mean Acts, 20, Acts 2 and 37? What did it say? They were pricked to their heart. Pricked. The Bible says that the word of God is a double-edged sword. It's like a hammer that breaks upon stone. You understand? So you got to understand when people hear it, it troubles them. The Bible said that uh, give not what's holy to dogs. People, they talked about, you know, uh, they'll, they'll turn and rant you, attack you. You understand? Because you're exposing who they truly are. So there's nowhere where these people died because they were talking like the Internet and talking like the Greek and Hebrew false translation that they have out today. If it was written from Hebrew and Greek, it's supposed to be identical. Jesus in Spanish is Jesus. No matter how you want to spin it, that's what it means. You ask any Spanish person, that means Jesus. You understand? That's that. That's it. So why is it different if that's where it came from? Somebody is lying. Somebody is being used by the devil to alter it. And that's why the Bible said... Uh, uh, um, we are not those who handle the word of God deceitfully. And it says that Satan has ministers. Okay? So let's let's move on. 1 Corinthians 15 and 2. By which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory. You hear that? If you keep in memory. Not go do all this searching and reading. This is what Paul is saying. He said, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you unless you have believed in vain you hear that keep in memory not hear what i'm saying and go and do some research and some studying off the internet or for somebody else he said what i what i myself one who is sent from god chosen by god has preached unto you listen now verse 3 first one chapter 15 verse 3 for I delivered unto you, first of all, listen, which I also received. You see that? Not anything that, that was given from, from somebody else or from the world or, you know, whatever. But as I receive first, right, the word. And I'm giving also you the word. Okay? For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures not internet not greek and hebrew okay that's not god's word now and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to scriptures well let's go see what scriptures paul was reciting because he didn't make up what he felt himself he didn't make up what greek and hebrew told him he didn't make up what he got from the internet or from an outside source he said as he received he delivered unto them and we can see that he received the four Gospels, Mark 9 and 31. So it was no outside information of what he was speaking. Nothing he made up. It wasn't no Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, new level, new devil, the word rapture, the Holy Trinity. He spoke scripture. Let me read it to you. Mark 9 and 31. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that, he... he after he is killed, he shall rise the third day. You see that? So Paul said, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. What scriptures? Mark 9 and 31. What did it say in Mark 9 and 31? But he's saying it in Corinthians. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to scriptures. Mark 9 and 31 said that he will rise on the third day. And if you read the rest of Mark, 
in the end of the Gospels, in those last chapters, they talk about him being put into the, the, um, the tomb and, and, and rising on the third day. Okay, one time the tomb was uh, was rolled back and the angels was sitting there, you know, the, the little the little uh, 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 piece of material was folded up nicely you know, and neat. You see, so Paul is telling you what Bible says, not what some Greek or some Hebrew or what someone told him through the grapevine. See, I'm like Paul. I'm speaking exactly what the words say. I'm not putting in what I learned from the Internet. OK. First Corinthians 11 and one. But ye be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. You see that? So what is he telling us now? He's saying to follow him. Well, we know that all scriptures came from God. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Right? 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says what? All scripture, revelation of God. So God is entrusting Paul to us. Okay? He's our leader. Right? We're reading what he's saying. If we were among him at this time, he'll be... Guiding us and leading us, right? Because we're following him. So that means he's a trusted, reliable uh, servant of Christ for, 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 for God to allow uh, him, tell him to write those words. Okay? 2 Corinthians 4 and 13 says what? We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe. Now you say, well, what? but he didn't say what was written. Come on now. And therefore have I spoken. We also mean where we speak. Well, what did he speak? The gospel. How many books did Paul write? There you go. Okay. In the book of Acts. In all Paul's individual epistles. What was he speaking? What was written in the gospel? That's right. Marriage. Divorce. You know, forgiveness. You know, not to commit evil against people. You know, put away anger. Everything that Christ said. Right? That's right. 1 Corinthians 7 and 37. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his own heart, having no necessity. You see that? Having no. So you got your own power, your own right, your own will to do what you want, right? But has power over his own will and has so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin, does will. You see that? And has power over his own will. You see? You got power. Nothing makes you sin but yourself. You don't believe me? Look what Paul just said. Now let's look at what James just said. Remember, the Bible is not a contradiction. Today, the false Christian, they teach it as a contradiction. They'll do a whole teaching about one particular verse in the Bible and will talk for two hours. But what they said, another verse will contradict it. They're misinterpreting it and they're misquoting it and they're coming up with their own interpretation of what they're saying, right? So look, look what Paul said. He has power over his own will. So that's showing you that you have control and ability to do what you want to do. He said, it, you know, he 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 uh, have uh, having no necessity. I mean, no need, but has power of his own will and has so decreed in his heart. You see that decreed in his heart. That means told himself. OK. That he will keep his version does well. You see that? Not not. Oh, we're going to lie sometime. They wouldn't say this. You have people that read these teachings, that read his epistles, and that's all they had. Some of them never even seen other epistles. You understand? Some of them never even seen the whole Bible like we have today. What a rare privilege that we can have all these epistles in one. Some of them, Paul haven't even wrote some of the other epistles yet. So they were given these epistles. It ain't talking about we make mistakes and we fall short. They're taking it as they, they have it. We have in the same as it is written, I believe. You see what he's telling them? It ain't no, oh yeah, uh, somewhere in John it says this. Some never even read John yet. Or never would have read John. Okay? Some of them died off, went to prison. But look what James said to support what Paul say. I told you. We have in the same spirit of faith as it is written. I believe. Therefore, I have spoken. We also believe, therefore, we speak. We. James is one of those we. Look what James say. James 1 and 13. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Watch this. Same thing Paul said. Power over your own will. Right? But every man is tempted when he, he is drawn away of his own lust. And entice. Then when lust has conceived. 
it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. You see that? Same thing. James ain't saying nothing about we all sin. We all make mistakes. He's saying you're drawn away of your own lust. That means what you want. The same way Paul said power over your own will. Same thing, right? All right, let's move along. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. And with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. You see that? So people are walking around believing a lie because God gave them a strong delusion. That's why what they say don't make any sense. Anybody delusional doesn't make any sense. You see that? They believe in things that can't be proven. That's why they're going to the internet. The, the, the Bible is saying one thing. The internet is contradicting the Bible. They're saying that the Bible is wrong. They want to believe in God so bad, right? But they don't like the words in the Bible. And they go to the internet to tell them different words and different meanings and interpretations than what the Bible say. Is that not delusional or what? What would motivate them? That's because they're in Christianity. And Christianity uh, uh, recruited all these people, right? And thought that just by what they told them and the things they say, they was going to be content with that. But see, a lot of people in Christianity, they wanted to know more. They wanted to be more dedicated, know what, what more they can do to receive God's blessings his miracles, all the things that he has to give them as it was taught to the people when they first heard the, the false message being preached. So they open that Bible up and they start, what? Love my neighbors. Be perfect. I don't like white people. I don't like black people. What do you mean be perfect? I, I thought nobody is perfect. I, I thought we all sin. I, I, I thought we all make mistakes. I, I, I thought that, we, you know, that, that only, on, only Christ is perfect. What, what, what do you mean? I'm going to go to hell because... You know, I, I masturbate, I, I lie, I, I, I fornicate, I commit adultery, I, I like worldly things, I, I like to do what the rest of the world does. So you, what do you mean? Let me, let me go look at the Greek. Let me, let me Google this. It's not sitting well. My, I, I, I'm not, today's not a good day for me. Uh, I, I just read where Jesus told the man, go and sin no more. Google, why is Jesus saying go and sin no more when no one is perfect? Guess what? You got backup. You got backup, young man. You got backup, uh, uh, my sister. Right? Here you go. Oh, Jesus is just saying. You see that? Who wrote that? Jesus, no, no one is perfect. He's, he just was saying that, you know, like he just, it's, it's like metaphorically uh, speaking, uh, you know, you see what I'm trying to say? Then you're going to have comfort. So now you're going to transition. I'm not reading the KJV anymore. I'm going to read the NIV. I'm going to read the ESV. If it ain't broke, why need to fix it? What's wrong with the KJV? It's the same words, ain't it? Oh, it's easier to read. It's the same. Come on now. The KJ might have thou and thee and a few old English words. But for the most part, the Bible said, you know, contend for the faith. We hear contend today during the basketball game. Oh, they got to contend against this or, you know, or uh, the Bible talks about, um, you know, try the spirit. OK, you still say try today. So what is hard to read, but the few words that that might not be as spoken today in our nation or in our generation. Hmm. You see? So how the KJV hard to read? No, that's the real word of God. That's the problem. That's why you never hear anything else about them other translations. They start saying, you're King James. Nobody care about King James. David killed Uriah with Bathsheba. But still, in, 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 still, the Bible says it wasn't David that saved the people from hell and internal punishment. It was Christ. David played his role the same way King James played his role. An authority figure, power, a king. You know, he played his role. That's all that matters. Okay? So some of them walking around, they have strong delusions. Okay? That's why they can't listen to what you're saying. It don't make any sense. 
The same way what they talk about doesn't make any sense to me. And what I'm talking about to them don't make any sense because they're delusional. They don't believe in the word. They were brought to false Christianity. They wanted to do some research and some studying and, you know, looking into the Bible because they don't, they don't have a book. They got to use our Bible. The Bible says Christian in it, not Christianity. The Bible says not to have division, not to have schism in the body of Christ. Christianity allows denominations, non-denominations, all these false uh, 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 doctrines of men. They accept those things. Right. Courtney said, as you know, it's an excuse because school teaches you. You know, it's an excuse because school teaches you to read deeper and harder. The higher grade you go, you don't finish high school by reading on the elementary level. That's see, that's what I'm, that's what we saying. See? That's the point I'm trying to make. So a lot of people just read that Bible. I mean, a lot of people just come to Christianity and they don't even care. But when they start trying to figure out like what they could do to stop the torment and stop the punishment, I mean, stop the torment and, you know, stop the sicknesses and all that stuff. That's when they start getting into, oh, let me read the Bible and looking at these promises and, you know, looking at what, what the Bible says about this, the Bible says about that. And they start reading. They don't be content with it. They don't like it. So they start being troubled. And that's where they get to the Greek and the Hebrew. You know, like, think about it. You see the the, the, the brother went on, it may, you know, went public and was like, you know, this this is a gospel celebrity. He went public and was like, yeah, the Greek says, he said that none of us are doctors. We're all patients. The Bible don't say that. You see? So they even adapt to, like, catchy phrases that's of the world. You know, that's what Kirk Franklin said. We're not doctors. We're patients. You know, Jesus said, I came for the sick, those who are not needed. But this this is this is the people who were that's that's how they were before he they received of him. We're no longer the sick once we're where he said you can't set the captives free. And the Bible said by church we're healed. So we're not sick anymore. You understand? Once we're sick, we're better. We don't live as a sick person once we're healed. Right? That was that's who he came for. So he was saying that we're not doctors. I don't I guess it just sounded good to him, but it, it don't make any sense. They always trying to catch some catchy phrase. That they got from the internet. By the end of the day, all I'm saying is, is it makes them look bad because they're portraying to be these spiritual people that are living like the rest of the world, right? And they like the things of the world, but they don't want to, they don't, their rep, their reputation and their level of pride and delusion don't allow them to have that reputation as being like the rest of the world. So they make it seem like God approves of you know, them doing songs with rappers and doing videos with rappers and singers and stuff like that. They make it seem like God is cool. But what's going to allow, what's going to make the world people want to come to God when y'all doing songs with them? You know, y'all on the stage with them. Y'all at the BET Awards. What's going to make them want to come to God? You're not living different than them. Y'all pulling up in the same cars, wearing the same clothes, shopping in the same Louis Vuitton and Gucci stores, wearing the same red bottoms, you know. Same MCM belts or whatever the case may be. There's nothing different. So what's going to motivate these people to want to become a believer when you're uh, supporting their lifestyle of, of sin and of darkness? What's going to make them want to become a believer? Think about it. You're supposed to be different. They're supposed to see the need for, for those things. You're supporting it. So why are you every day at church, every day paying your, your, your tithes and offering, whose God's not commanding you to do, why are you doing all those things if you're no different than them? Because it's ritualistics. It's rituals. Right? It's a cult. It makes you feel good. Because it's not you're not different. You're not righteous. You're not holy. You're not godly. You're no different than them. But it makes you feel good to make yourself feel like you're different. And that's why they created Christianity. That's why they don't they don't they don't that's why you don't see them obeying the Bible. Even the ones that's portraying to be these Bible toting, you know, demon slayings. <laughs> You know, I'm going to tell you what the Bible say. I'm going to rebuke y'all openly. They, they they do all that talking and still themselves are not doing what the Bible says. They're just stronger in delusion. And the world has always been simple minded apart from God. What's the Bible say? The wisdom of the world is what? Foolishness to God. Right. And the wisdom of the world is foolishness to God. Right. So people don't accept the word of God. So if you got people that's 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 in the world and God telling the wisdom of the world is foolishness to God. These are the same foolish people who are claiming to be wise uh, prophets and pastors and, and preachers. 
This is why they come up with their own way of, of, of what they believe is serving God. They all, listen, you got, you got these, these false pastors talking about each other and they all are, are, are going to church on Sunday. They all are part of denomination or non-denominations. They all dress alike. You know, it's like an identical twin. Like, I don't like the way you look. You got an identical twin, right? Tia and Tamara from Sister Sister. They look at you like, I don't like the way you look. She looked like you. What is different? Maybe one got a birthmark right here. Maybe one got a birthmark right there. Yeah, but as far as most of y'all look identical. Most can't tell you apart. You understand? But in themselves, they want to have reputation. Oh, I'm not like the world. I like what they do. It's like throwing rocks and hiding your hand. You know? Like they like what the world does, but they don't want to be labeled as the world for whatever reason. Maybe they was raised that way in delusion. They were taught that by their parents. You know, they built reputation off of seeming like this person, you know, this and this and that. Right? But it's only so long people can run without getting tired. It's only so long you can fake before you get exposed. Right? All, all things that are, are done in darkness going to be, you know, it's going to be uh, shown in the light. Okay? So... We got to stop doing drugs. I wrote this down because I was saying like, okay, for instance, say say a, a, a drug addict comes in a drug house and he's like, hey, we got to all stop doing drugs. It sounds good, right? Saying something that's truthful, but they themselves are still doing drugs. So a lot of false pastors will say things that are truthful in the Bible, or they're not living the word. Remember, the Bible says you have to be a doer of the word, not a hearer, only deceiving your own self, Right? And that's why the Bible said they pervert the gospel of Christ, right? That and they 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 rest the scriptures. So it doesn't matter. That's why Paul said we're not we're not we're not we're not as those who handle the word of God deceitfully. Okay? So it doesn't matter because somebody is telling you something that sounds good. Yeah, that's right. We gotta stop doing drugs. But you're in here, right? You're with us, you're among us, you're doing the same things. And that's how you gotta look at it. And you gotta remember this too. A lot of the false Christians. They 99% of the false Christians don't know all the sins they're committing because some things they were taught because if, if it was too open, if their sins that they were committing was, you know, seen openly before all, they wouldn't build a reputation of being a servant of God. Right. Or whatever they, they feel that that looks like. So a lot of them know that, like, hey, I can't just be looking like I'm not wise and mature and I can't be coming in here with my pants sagging. So they got to present themselves a different way. But a lot of them don't know that laziness is a sin. A lot of them don't even know about anxiety. A lot of them don't even know about fear, right? They're not believers. So they know something. That's why it's called false doctrine, right? False doctrine, a false gospel. They're not, Paul and them said false gospel. They didn't call it, you know, oh, something different. They're saying gospel, right? But they're saying false first, then gospel. So that means that they're going to be saying things in, that's in the gospel, but they're going to be saying it falsely. You follow me? They're going to be saying the doctrine of Christ, they're going to be saying things that's in the doctrine of Christ, but they're going to be saying it falsely. That's why the Bible said, if any man bring not this doctrine and John, don't allow him to your house, nor bid him Godspeed. So they're going to clearly be saying false things, right? They're going to be saying things that's in the gospel, but it's going to be used falsely and spoken falsely. Okay? So just because a drug addict say, hey, we got to stop doing drugs. That's true. Right? But you're still doing drugs. So you're just a hypocrite. Some people, something that might be valuable and suitable for their life, but you're still doing the same thing as well. That's the false Christian for you. Okay. They take the words of God, which is righteous. They're not righteous, but they can repeat some righteous words. There you go. The internet does not screen people or nor, nor the information. I spoke on that already. The internet allows whatever. You can watch porn. You can learn how to build guns. You can watch fights. I mean, whatever. You can watch people getting shot by police. You can watch police getting shot. I mean, internet is it's not censored. Okay? So, it, you, you can look up anything up there. But the Bible is righteous. You ain't about to look in the Bible and, 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 and get aroused reading a story. Right? Or, or think about getting rich reading the Bible. Or learning how to get rich. Or, you know, uh, 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 donate, uh, give me your money to stocks and bonds. That ain't, you ain't going to find that in the Bible. But on the internet, you can find all those things. You can find how to pick up a man, how to pick up a woman, what are, what are good pickup lines, you know, what's the best cologne, 
that will seduce women, seduce men. You know, what's what's the you know, what's the best steroid to get big? Everything that's up that's opposite of God, you can find it in, on the internet. But when you open the Bible, you ain't gonna find what's some pickup lines. The Bible said not to look at a woman to lust. So if a man looks at a woman to lust, that we already commit adultery in the heart, right? So the Bible tells you not to fornicate, not to be an adultery, not to commit adultery, right? The Bible talks about whoremongers. The Bible talks about inordinate affection. So you, you you see what I'm saying? So the internet is 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 why would it have? Why can't you go in the Bible to find things that you can find in the world? But you can go in the world to find things about the Bible. That's strange. You see? Why would the world want to have anything written about the Bible? Because it's against God. Just it's just it's, it's portraying it as if it's not. Where is the nomination written in the Bible? It's not, but it's on the internet. I've spoken that already. Galatians 2, verse 4. And that because of false brethren, unaware as, brought in, who came in privily to spy our liberty, which we have in Jesus, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us, un, us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. You see that? You can't let people, you know, speak anything that's not of God. That's why Paul didn't let him speak it. If 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 it if it's not dangerous to hear false teachings and false doctrines, right? If it's not dangerous, why didn't Paul let them speak anything that they felt? Why did that, why didn't let them be like Geno Genesis and make them debate, right? Or say whatever. You, you know, you're not supposed to, the Bible say to have no fellowship, right? If we were to rather reprove them. You don't want somebody that's new in Christ or someone that's, you know, just coming in and, or someone that's there, you know, whatever. And they're hearing things. You don't want them to say those things because Satan is not stupid. Okay. He knows what to say. He knows how to spin it to get your attention to get you to listen. He's not going to just say some off the wall stuff. He's going to be like, well, you know, well, well, uh, in the Bible, the word dark was written in there. So you see, the see, that's why we was black and we always been rejected. Look what she say. I'm dark and, you know, the songs of Solomon. You see what I'm trying to say? Like Satan knows. That's why he said it's written. Jump off. Right? Trying to tell the Lord to commit suicide. Right? But he was misquoting Psalms of Romans 11, 12. He didn't just say, Man, just go ahead and jump off. He used he 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 misused the scriptures. You see, he's not stupid, right? Because somebody that doesn't know the word of God would have went for it. You got people today, in a lot of these these churches, that's that's dancing with snakes, because the Bible said we could handle snakes with care. That's talking about if a snake comes up in your around you, you could pick it up and you know get rid of it. It's not. It's just saying that you know the Lord protect you. No harm will come unto you. Not dancing, provoking them, act like you can't get bit. That's not what the Bible, what does the Bible say? We're Indian dancers. What you see is with the little flute and the little, whatever that is, the little, the little uh, instrument. And you, beep, 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 beep. you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. That's not what the Bible is saying. So you can drink any deadly thing and it won't hurt you. It's not saying go drink deadly things. Right? You see in, with Elijah that it was, it was something poisonous in the pot. And you know, because he was a man of God, you know, he, 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 he blessed it. You know, the grace of God was with him and they was able to eat it. That's what they're talking about. They're not saying you're not supposed to tempt the Lord thy God. So how can you, how can you just take snakes, vipers and uh, rattlesnakes and all these poison snakes and just be damned? That's not, they said not, thou should not tempt the Lord thy God. So you're not supposed to put yourself in danger. Okay. The Bible tells you to avoid danger. It tells you that way in the Old Testament. It goes the other, other way when you see danger. What are you talking about? The Bible tells you to avoid it. The Bible says you persecute in one town, flee to the next. Flee. That means run. You ain't supposed to be, oh, yeah, come on, danger. You know what I'm saying? Paul was let out of one out of the basket. He went there like, yeah, King Kong ain't got nothing. Like, come on, y'all. You understand? Like, the brother got up out of there. You know, Jesus himself. They tried to push him off the cliff headlong. He passed through them. Went on through the crowd. And the Bible standing there like, yeah. The Lord going to, that's not what it's saying. It's saying because of his grace and his protection that when these, if these things do happen to you, right, no trouble will befall you. You're protected. You're safe in his hand, right? This is what he's telling you. That Bible also don't tempt the Lord thy God. You can't tempt him. So you're not supposed to, you know, do something that's going to 
injure yourself, the Bible says they have a living sacrifice. You can't hurt other people. How are you going to hurt yourself? Come on now. If I can't hurt somebody, can I take a snake and, and, and put it on somebody and let the snake bite them? So why would the snake bite myself? If I can't hurt somebody, why would I hurt myself? Come on now. You can't punch somebody. You can't punch yourself. What's, what, 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 that's, that's still violence. That's still hurting yourself. You're not supposed to do that. The Bible says, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Holy people are not going to do stuff like that. I can't punch nobody, God said, but I'm going to punch myself. Boom, boom, boom. Like, come on, brothers and sisters. It's the same. If you're not supposed to um, curse, you're not supposed to let anybody else curse around you. It's the same thing. You can't be comfortable because you're not doing it and somebody else is doing it. Romans tells you what? You're worthy of death. Not only those who do it, but find pleasure in those who do it. Okay? So you see, Paul said that the gospel may continue with you. Now, they didn't let him speak not for one hour. And then look what it says. But if these who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were, it make it no matter to me. God accepted no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. You see that? Y'all think I'll be just see, because y'all respect these, these big names out here. But see, remember, the word of God came first before the big name came. The word of God came first before all these mega passes and small passes and little passes and big passes. The word of God came first. My loyalty is to God. That's man that's respecting these men. Okay? The word of God tells you how it's supposed to be. It don't matter who you are. Okay? Ephesians 4 and 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and, some, and, and teachers. Watch this, y'all. If it's not serious about truly learning God's word and truly being connected with these men of God that have the spirit of God, that you see Christ being manifested in them, right? Then why are they saying this right here? If it's, you don't got to be careful. Why did Paul say in Galatians? And now we're going to read in Ephesians, a whole nother uh, epistle in a whole nother uh, uh, country he's talking to. Look what he's saying here. He said, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in unity of faith, of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Y'all hear that? That we hench for, be no more children, you see that? Toss to and fro. And carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lay in wait to deceive. Y'all see that? So how how they not seeing? So y'all thinking I'm just out here saying all this stuff because you don't believe in the Bible? They think I'm out here just like going super duper hard, but you don't know the Bible say people are gonna do this. Even the ones who think, that, even the ones who think that they're they're, they're, they're enforcing the word. They're deceived because they're not living the word. They'll tell you all the Bible say without doing what the Bible says. They'll talk all about what others are doing and they're identical with them. Tell me the difference between the people that you know today on TBN and others. I'm not going to mention no names because it's nothing. And one thing, one thing I want you to know about me as well, and I told Sarah this, I, I don't speak evil of people, right? Evil surmising, making up stuff. This is why y'all only see me talk about particular things that the Bible says. And I see that they're not doing what the Bible says, right? Y'all don't see me talking about uh, T.D. Jakes is committing adultery or Joe Osteen uh, uh, lied yesterday when he took out a like, you don't see me saying, oh, Gino Jennings, he he's womanizing. I, I never was. I don't know. I don't think about that. You understand? I'm not putting that on those men. I'm not going to speak evil of them. I'm just telling you biblically that their names are not, their church names are not biblical. Being a Passover church is not biblical. Taking tithes and offerings is not biblical. The things that I do know, okay? Them being in denominations and non-denominations. Them going to church on Sunday, right? None of that stuff is biblical. That's all made up. But they're all portraying themselves as being devoted believers of Christ. How? How are they, how are they, how are they, um... How are they uh, acting that way when when they don't even have the same setup that the Bible have? They're not even walking the way uh, uh, Christ walked. They're not following uh, Paul, right, as he follows Christ. 
They're not even obeying the epistles or the doctrines. They're doing what the system did before they was created, before they was born, is what I'm, is what I'm trying to say. They're doing what their uncles did, their dads did, their grandfathers did before them. They're following in the same Christianity footsteps. But then they just use their personality, their wits, their intelligence, their memories to build up their fan base and their bitter reputations for themselves. But they are identically the same as everybody else. So look, Second John and nine. Listen, this is remember what, what did Paul just say? Right. They let him speak. Not one. Not for one hour. Now, look at John. Remember, so we had we had Paul early in James and now we got Paul again and we got John. You see that they all speak the same thing. They wasn't playing. It don't matter how many epistles Paul wrote, or how many epistles John wrote, or how many he didn't wrote. When you did when you when you write, when you read them, they're all saying the same thing, brothers and sisters. Listen, because it's the same gospel today. They're not preaching the same gospel. That's why they all divided. I might not look like the other ones out here. But guess what I do look like? The ones in the Bible. The only church, the only church that I belong to is the church of God. And you can find that in the book of Acts, chapter 20, and you read from there. Okay? Now, you can find the church of God all through the New Testament. You're going to see where a Christian never paid tithes and offerings. You're going to see that we had fellowship every day. And we didn't call it going to church. We are the church. Okay? We're the church. The, the church is, is all the believers, right? All the callings, right? All the, 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 the saints and, and, and we fellowship daily on one accord. Okay. We came together. That's who, that's what I'm a part of what you see in scripture. So I might, I might don't look like the rest is out here today. That don't mean I'm dividing myself from them. I mean, I don't mean that don't mean that, that I'm, I'm claiming my own, you know, uh, denomination or no, I'm claiming what the Bible says. I'm a Christian. I'm a saint. I'm a disciple. All the names is mentioned. I'm not in Christianity. I'm not no um no pastor over no church. Okay? I am who I am in Christ. And my job is to be obedient and do the word say. I don't care about no books. I don't care about having no church building. All that stuff. I'm I'm living as it lived in the Bible. And God's gonna support that and back me up until the day I leave this world. Okay? That's my purpose. To live and obey his word, to speak his word. Okay, John 2 and 9 says, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. You hear that? Whoever sin. You see that? Whoever sin. This is the, what y'all saying in 1 John 1 and 8. He said we have, he said we have no sin. You see what I'm trying to say? Y'all don't know what y'all reading. But that's the point because y'all was taught Christianity. So when you do read the truth, you're going to resist it. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, he had... Um, has not God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. You see that? They was not playing about them false doctrines. In a false gospel. They weren't playing about the, the Lord's words being twisted up. First Timothy. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus. When I went to Macedonia. That thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed. You see that? You see? Y'all thinking I'm just saying this stuff. No other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables. Endless genealogies. Which minister in questions. You see that? Rather than godly edifying. Which in faith so do. Now, the end of the commandment is charity of a pure heart and of a good conscience and faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved, having turned aside unto what? Vain jangling. You see that? You see? It's all what you see today. First John 4 and 5. They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world and the world hear of them. Greek, Hebrew, the Internet. You see that? We are of God. He that know of God, hear of us. He that is not of God, hear of not us. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. See? The internet. They speak of the world and the world hears them. Right? The internet makes you question God 
it makes you confused. That's the facts. When you read the Bible, if you don't have any other book and you have the Bible, how would it lead you to hell? How would it make you live a worse life if you have just the Bible itself without no Greek, no Hebrew, no no Bible commentary, no uh, uh, study Bible? If you have the Bible, right, let me just give you a few verses. Love your neighbor as yourself. Forgive. Love your wife and be not bitter towards her, right? Love your wife as Christ of the church, okay? The Songs of Solomon, the blueprint for marriage, okay? You, you, you see, uh, it, it talks about how Christ has given uh, uh, you power. The church on service going all power, that's why any means hurt you. Where are, what did I just say right now? Without the internet, right? Without Greek, without Hebrew, that's going to make you go and uh, cheer on your wife or beat your wife. The Bible say, love not the world and things that are in the world. Remember, let the world know the Father is not in you. What do I need Greek and Hebrew for? The Bible say, love your enemies. Do good to me that hate you. Bless them that curse you. What, what do I need Greek and Hebrew for? What, 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 what is it that I said that, that, that you're confused about? Or you want to go read a different translation? Or you want to Google, why did Christ say, love your neighbor as yourself? Who was your neighbor? Well, if you, if you never read the Bible and you live in a neighborhood, right? A neighborhood. And somebody say, your neighbor next door had some mail come. You know, it came to me, but... They're not home. Can I give it to you? And they'll say, what neighbor? They'll say, oh, the neighbor that stay in uh, 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 door B. Oh, okay. That's Bob. I, I give I give I, my neighbor, come back home. I give it to him. You know neighbor. But now you go, what's neighbor mean? Because you don't agree with loving everybody. Because you're racist. You feel that Caucasian people treat black people wrong. You feel that black people are ghetto and, you know, they're, they're hood or they're gangster. That's the truth. Okay? They're going to steal your pocketbook. You know? They're going to sag their pants. Caucasian people are going to smile without showing their teeth. You're going to say, oh, that's, that's the, you know, that's the fake smile. You see? So it's, it's, something is, is, has moved you. But what is wrong for what I just said, though? What's wrong for what I just said? Why do you have to, you know, you know, don't sin. Be righteous, be holy. Right? Even as your Father in heaven are. God is the proud of the grace of the humble. What does it mean that God is the proud of the grace of the humble? What do you mean what it means? The Bible was written for it to be understood. It's not meant to be interpreted by an outside source. Just keep on reading. Just go past that verse. It's okay. You got 27 books. You might don't understand many scriptures, but you will understand some of them. You understand? I mean, come on now. Love your neighbor. Love your enemies. You don't know what an enemy is. You don't know what the word forgiveness means. You know, the Bible say, how can, if you don't forgive, how can God forgive you? You got to go and Google that. You don't know what it means to forgive somebody. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They're going to ask the internet. Hey, Google, how do I make, hey, Google, how do I, 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 I drink cold water? What do I do to make my water colder, Google? Water, how, Google, how do I cook eggs? Google, how do I tie my shoe? Like they Google so much stuff in the world. That they bring that same nature over to when they, they're in Christianity and they start reading the Bible. They Google everything. Google, what's this mean? My skin, I have a birthmark. Google, I have a, 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 I feel like I have a sign in my hand. Google, what does it mean if my teeth is crooked? Google, what does it mean if I got, what does it mean that I have broad shoulders, Google? What, what does it mean if I can't see my Adam's apple? Google, why are my eyes so dark? Google, what, what, why do women like taller men? Why, why do men like women with, with, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you. what They Google everything. They're, they're of the world. Conform not to the world. That means don't do what they do. So you bring that same Google, got to know everything, want to know everything, to the Bible. And the Bible is telling you what you want. It's a religion. That means that it was created before you. And it's only designed to be obeyed, not to be questioned. You understand? That's why people like myself, I never question the Bible. What's the Bible telling me to do? Go hurt somebody? You see, I ain't done that. What's the Bible telling me? Go and cheat? I ain't done that. What's the Bible saying? Go and do this and go and do that. Go and fornicate? I ain't done that. So, I mean, I mean, you see me every day, but since I'm making these videos, I'm out here, 
getting bit about mosquitoes. I'm sitting here telling you about righteousness, holiness, and godliness. I mean, what is the Bible telling me to do that's going to make me become roulette gaudy again? Or the ex gay member? Or the ex drug dealer? Or the ex rapper? With Brick Squad Monopoly? What, I mean, what, what is the Bible telling me that I need to go and look up some Bible commentary? Or read it in Greek and Hebrew because whatever I'm reading is just not sitting well with me. What is it saying? What is it saying? That it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man making it into heaven? You want to be rich? That's why you're going to Google. Google, why did Jesus say that rich man can't go to heaven? Oh, Jesus is saying at that time because he was talking to somebody. But he says, go and preach this word to all the world. Hmm. <laughs> then the Bible talks about people being rich in the book of James. They have pierced themselves with many sorrows. So they saying the same words. But Jesus said it first. Then James says it. Paul talks about it. Right? So, I mean, Peter mentions Luke. Paul mentions Luke. You see? Rumors. If you never would have heard those things, your mind wouldn't think those things. So when someone tells a rumor about somebody, a lot of times the person is not a rumor. Basically, the person is not there to hear what's being said about themselves. So a lot of times when a, a rumor is being uh, told or somebody spoke it, right? A lot of times your mind you will start going to wonder and thinking because you heard those things but if you never would have heard those things the rumor never would have you know the, the rumor would never have planted the negative seeds inside your mind like yeah i heard that so-and-so is a cheater you never even had a chance to ask so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so. you just got told it then somebody else tell then you go and tell somebody else next thing you know it ain't that the person cheated now he's he's strung out on crack and now it got to the 10th person. He ain't just stung out on crack. He a, he a drug lord. Working with the cartel. You see? Because it's all negativity. It's all designed to make you question a person's character. To make you judge a person without having truth. It's darkness. It's to, it's to destroy relationships. It's to, to, to have you feel that you're better than people or they're not good enough. To have you look at people in a bad light. Because why had a rumor... Without, why, why would you believe what somebody is saying without knowing if it's true? Why would you entertain hearing something about somebody without knowing if it's true? So you're just trusting people telling you whatever without them having any evidence. Using the court of law right now, it'll be a mistrial because you don't got no evidence. You're just saying word of mouth. There's no proof. There's no, there's no uh, police reports. There's no camera footage. There's no weapon. There's no fingerprints. There's nothing. You're just saying, I just think that they did it. I mean, that's the case. I mean, any one of us is walking around, they can say, I think that he did it. You know, where's the proof? So a rumor is dangerous because it's spoken to somebody, right? And it's things that's being said about somebody else. They sitting here talking about God on the internet, but y'all don't think that is bad because they're saying, oh, it means this, it means that. It is bad because God never gave them permission. There's nowhere in scripture where it said that people can talk about God outside of his word and make it what they want to make up and get their own interpretation. That's not what it says. The Bible tells us what the word of God say, that the Lord is not he who commits up as approval, who the Lord commended. You don't know who the people are on the internet. You don't know where they come from. You don't know what they stand for. You don't know what they believe. They're just telling you stuff, right? So that's why a rumor is so dangerous, right? Just like how people spread things about God. They're just saying stuff. Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. You hear that? You hear what he's saying? He's telling you how to think. So you ain't supposed to be thinking no other way but what they just told you. Think on things that are what? True, honest, just, right? Lovely, pure, lovely, good report. You see that? So why are you thinking about Hebrew and Greek and, and, and Bible commentary? 
If you're thinking on those things, you shouldn't be thinking on anything else. Romans 8 and 5. For they that are uh, after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be carnally spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is in many against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So they that are after the flesh cannot please God. But you are not after the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God is dwelling in you. Now, if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. You see that? So people that are in the flesh, they mind the things of the flesh, and they, they're not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. They can't do it. You see? Titus 3 and 9 said, But avoid foolish questions and genealogy contentions and striving about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man as a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth himself, being condemned of himself. You see that? So you got to be careful. You got to be on guard. First Corinthians 4 and 14. I write now these things to shame you. I write not these things to shame you. But as my beloved sons, I warn you. You see that? I warn you. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ. You, you see what Paul is saying? Everybody is being taught by somebody. And somebody always trying to teach them about something. But look how Paul destroys all that. Being taught from all these outside sources. Just watch. Right? For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet ye not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye what? Followers of me, not the instructors. Not the 10,000 instructors. Okay? These outside and these resources. But don't follow them. Paul didn't say, hey, you know, yeah, keep them, you know, and this and that and then that. He said, be ye followers of me. Okay? For this cause I have sent unto you Timothy, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance. You see that? Not what you learned from the instructors, not the 10,000 instructors, not Google and the internet, right? But what the word say, what did Paul speak? The word, right? For this cause I sent unto you Timothy, who was my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. You see that? Now, some are puffed up as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord will. And I will know and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love or in the spirit of meekness? You see that? So. So my question is this. You see what Paul is saying about the instructors, but he's saying, follow me. You see that? And he sent Timothy to remind them of what the gospel said. Because people was going around teaching things that was contrary to sound doctrine, right? There you go. So that's the point I'm making to y'all, brothers and sisters. You're supposed to only be content with the word of God. You see the brothers that spoke it, they only support the word of God. They only recite the word of God. They reminded the believers, hey, remember what I told you. You got 10,000 instructors. But you only got one me who, who was in Christ. He didn't say it was in Christ and instructors. Read it. Then he said, follow me. Then I'm sending Timothy to remind you, to bring your remembrance of what I taught you. You see that? So that's my point, brothers and sisters. The Internet is against God. It's used by Satan to bring confusion, to make you question, to make you doubt, to make you scratch your head. If you take away the Internet, think about our brothers and sisters that came before us 2,000 years ago, 1,000 years ago, whatever, right, that had the word of God, heard the word of God. That's all they had. And why was they content? What did they do? They took it as it was. You are being troubled because you was brought to Christianity first. You see that? And they don't have a Bible, so they got to borrow our Bible. And our Bible will never agree with Christianity. It's not the same. So they're troubled by it. They're affected by it. You see that, brothers and sisters? That's where the problem lies. You see? So they're going to always go to the Internet and Google. 
Greek, Hebrew, to support the delusion. Okay? Love you all. God bless.